Happy Isle of Man TT what? Taurus Trophy season, y'all. Hell yes. We figure it's the best time right now to check out Closer to the Edge, the full documentary. Yes. I am so transfixed by this race, by yeah. this gathering of people with massive testicles. It's not just them. It's the teams behind the riders as well. It's tragic because we know it's tragic every year there's a tragedy that's a huge weight it's a huge weight on a on a team like hey man be safe yeah. do as best you can and come back at the time of this recording i've already recorded a kind of an intro to the tt journey on sj motorsport nice. and what i've learned is that this race predates both the indianapolis 500 and daytona 500 i think the first indy 500 was 1911 the first tt race was 1907 Wow. And wow. I think the most debts in a year was 11, and there's like one or two years with zero debts. So. Wow. That's wow, man. What I know so far. I mean, there's only so much you can learn in a 17 minute video. We've got an hour 40 documentary here. I'm sure they'll, we'll learn more. Let's see, man. I'm interested. I feel like this is going to not only give me my feels, but also be like edge of the seat kind of stuff. There's no slow motion in this. So. Not at all. So let's do All right, it, man. Strap in. There's no turning back from here. Nope. nope, let's do it. Three, two, one. There is nothing to compare it with. It's the most exhilarating place in the world. It's like being able to fly, just like growing wings. If it's in your blood, you can't get it out. You just want more. You put the earplugs in, the helmet goes on, everything goes quiet. You know it's ahead of you and everything else around you is forgotten. It's time to get on with the job. My mind goes completely blank. And my mind just goes into madness. Lincolnshire. Hey. There's our dude, Guy Martin. Hey. Nice fuzzy. Oh, revolves around um, Mr. Aiken, the primary school teacher, really. I need an air put manners in as that man. You know, in my day, lad, and all that. But I think, you know, fuck it, what a boy. Just, you know, if it was naughty, he used to give us the slipper. We know he was getting it because he used to warm it up on a radiator before he'd give us it. Man, I forgot that Guy Martin had such a thick accent, so. <laughs> yeah. You need to listen carefully here. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Um, pick stones up to the lawnmower, won't run over him. He used to have his own putting green out the back of school, and we used to, that was our main job, was keeping the. Keeping the putting green right and mowing grass, so yeah. And then, yeah, it's all natural progression. I wanted to go and race him. I've still got my fast engine I ever had. Suffer punch lawnmower engine. I mean, he's down there. Yeah, I just used to play with that. That's all I wanted to do. Oh, I, I wasn't bothered about, you know, I had a, had a few mates, but I wasn't bothered about, you know, girls. I'm still not bothered about girls, really. I mean, I'm not gay around, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'd rather play with. Lorries and tractors and engines. Still, I haven't really grown up. No, I haven't grown up. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Where are you? 
right and down, Bob. Yep. Broad races. A bit mad. That's time. Oh, you're bad. Um, what would you say? A tile short of a roof. One short of a six pack. A few slates adrift. We'd use that one a lot. Lights are on, but no one's on. I can imagine from the outside looking in, anyone that's racing the TT looks like the lights are on, but no one's on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Man. Until you've won a TT. I obviously aren't a proper road racer because I haven't won one. But I'm trying. I don't give in. <laughs> Barashim wasn't a big fan, was he? He thought it was too dangerous, did he? There you go, a lager shandy drinking Southern Fufters. There you go, that says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll say we're away now. Man. <laughs> Alright, boss. I was only watching that the other night. The Dambusters. Yeah, it's mega that. Wallace Barnes. You know, the idea that got into that was, um. Ah, oh, not Napoleon. Who was your boy that used the battleships? Forget him the name. Not Napoleon. <laughs> different things make different people happy, don't they? Some lads love going to the pub. I'm not being in the pub. Some lads love shagging. I don't like shagging. I don't mind it. I'm not into it. I'd rather just go and ride your motorbikes and my push bikes, you know. It's whatever you're into, isn't it? It was all the same, everybody would be the TT, wouldn't it? But the different things make different people tick. And that makes me tick, and that's why I'm gonna keep going. That's why I'm gonna keep going until I've won one. I won five, that's my plan. I win five in a week. That's not been done before. So I've got to do that. And then that's it, I'll go find the next job to do. I've got another big goal. This is a massive, is it? Well, it's massive, it's not massive, is it? This this guy is just a different breed, man. You know, yeah. this guy, I bet this guy gets the best night's sleep out there. Because yeah. he's not worried about bullshit that, that right. usually bring men down. He's right, just, right. He's driven. Drinking is... in the pub, uh, smoking. Girls. Uh, skirls. Like, like, he is the most zen AF person yes. ever. Yes. Uh, what do you mean? The, uh, the machines he works on are an extension of himself. Yep. yep. And you, yeah. you cannot... Uh, do anything about that he's up there with like the fred divnas of the world yeah yeah he's Real he's right there like this is this is his environment like how michael jordan is on the basketball court like yeah. this is his world he is the shark in his ocean there's no yes. one taking him out he's in his absolutely so, right right you can't yeah. come at this guy any which way no he no, will not at all. get back up yep man Massive. People use that word, don't they? And you people, you tell you what people word people use all the time. Unbelievable. Oh, you can't use that word, can you? Unbelievable. When a man, like I've said this before, when a man eats his own head, I will then hold my hands up and say, right, that was <laughs> unbelievable. Because I can't believe a man can eat his own head. But like we say, never say never. Unbelievable. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Evil can was a big sort of stuntman at the time and uh, I had Stars and Stripes suit and I had Stars and Stripes helmet and I thought it was Evil Knievel, you know. And my dad used to build me a ramp and I used to jump 14 toy buses where Evil Knievel tried to jump the 14 real buses and I wrote to Jim will fix it for him to do a jump with with him and uh, never even replied back, the miserable old goat, but uh, it's always been in me. I don't know any different. I'm not really interested in anything else, you know, football, cricket or anything. It's just been bikes all the way through my life. John McGinnis, that's a familiar name. All right. <laughs> He's still a little boy at heart. He's crackers, really. When I met him, he just finished motocross and he was wanting to get into racing bikes. And he always said, you know, I'm going to do an Isle of Man TT race one day. And he said, I just want to win a TT and I'll, I've got it under my belt and that's it. I'll, you know, never do it again. And he won his first 250 race, and we were like, oh, that's it, he's going to finish now. And I thought, thank God for that. But, you know, it just makes that bug grow even bigger, I think. Even then, when I was 10 years old, I used to watch it, and it used to just blow me away. I used to think, you know, that's going to be a bit of me one day, you know, I'm going to win one of these. And if I'd have been sat there then and somebody had said, you know, I'd have 15 wins, you know, you'd have probably, 
probably laughed at him and fell off the wall, you know. But uh, here I am with 15 wins. But still, wow. that, you know, jitters now, and you know, like TT's coming, TT's coming. You know, you're building up, building up, get apprehensive, nervous, and months before the TT, you know, and then I think about it, it makes me skip a heartbeat, really. And then I have to have the house immaculate, my garage has got to be immaculate, everything's got to be at its place, and mow the lawn, make sure that's all right, clean the cars. So just in case anything does happen, then. Everything's ready, you know, so, but I definitely think about it and, you know, wow. it's got to cross your mind. It has wow. to cross your mind because it's there uh. all the time. It's a reality that, you you know, you might not come back. <laughs> what, what What's shocking that, you, man? That, that, like, like, you have to understand and accept that it could be your time to go. So right. it's it's not morbid it's realistic to have your affairs in order before you head out right so right just to have that mental capacity like hey listen everything should be in order that way if my time does come the home life the family doesn't have to go through my shit. yeah yeah that's and that's yeah, different th right right that's that's completely different and I, when i said it in that video i said you know it's the same reason people do the TT. It's the same reason that people still ride roller coasters. People still go base jumping. They why they still talk. Men still talk to women, like things like that. It's just the thrill of it, yep. and you know, there's a satisfying feeling of knowing you completed that death-defying yep. thing. Yeah. So, you know, but it's just like the adrenaline junkie will never be quelled it, it in fact it it makes it grow more yeah it and, is its own addiction yeah and so. that's one of those things you never stop until you stop John Lachini, 1743 under the lap record from a standing wow for two incredible weeks each summer generations of men and women have made the pilgrimage to the isle of man to pit themselves against the track which has achieved international status and become synonymous with speed and glory. At a time when the maximum permitted speed on English roads was just 20 miles per hour and racing strictly prohibited, a band of enthusiasts intent on testing their bikes and themselves to the limits of speed and endurance gathered on the Isle of Man. And in 1907, the tourist trophy was born. Say. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who uh, haven't uh, seen that video, the in in those times, Britain had mandated a nationwide speed limit of twenty miles an hour. Wow! Like you couldn't race any more than that, and they pretty much outlawed wow. racing. So this was like because the Isle of Man is is under British rule, but it's still kind of a separate country. Is a separate country. Let's put let's be real here. People came over to the island and set up a race course so that they could race. And, Got it. You know, this is how that whole thing So it was like a loophole. Started. It's a loophole. Yeah. Isle of Man loophole, is basically. a loophole. Got it. Got it. Correct. Correct. Cool. Look at the suspension. You see? And then put it the other way. Watch that. Keep watching. It'll do something. See? Look at that. Hey? We and Guy's got this typical father son relationship. <laughs> yeah. Guy knows best and I knows best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a brew on. You see, steady cam, that's what it is. What's that shockers in it so much? Is what? See, when you was holding that thing, you can jab, but well, that takes all the jar out of the camera, doesn't it? <laughs> It do you? I bet it's do you that, innit? Go on, how much is that arm there, then? 1400. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> 14 grand. 14 grand. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. 14 grand. The first TT was 74, riding a Gus Kuhn Norton Commando production bike. I thought, I'm going to be a TT superstar here. So <clears throat> I set off from the. How old, down how old was you? I was uh, 
Yeah, how old was I? 1974. <coughs> 47. What's that then? I don't know. 74. 47. Fire. Anyway, come uh, into <laughs> Glen Ellen, hook Craig Willie's Hill, cranked it in, down, 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 no further to go, bang, straight over the bank. The bike finished up in three bits, and I brought me back, Oof. and I was back at the TT again the following year. <laughs> See what I mean? Yep. It, it just the fear of death ain't gonna stop these these guys from doing this. No, I like, don't, well, that's the thing, Spence. I don't think there's a fear of death. It's an acceptance of. You right, know? accept that it's going to happen, and yep. this year might be your year. Yep. Our worst crash ever, probably northwest, 2008, come off a black hill, lost the front on the apex of the corner. Whoa. Fast, maybe 120 mile an hour. Hit the curb with my ass at 120 mile an hour. I walked away, walked away, no bother. The bike was nothing. We could have to salvage anything. Everything was written off on it, everything. And um, I got away from that, but it scared me. It didn't scare me for life, it just... Proper. I just thought I just thought another one of those moments. I just thought, oof. But I suppose that, you know, get it wrong. You're an inch out here, that's it. Yeah, we like that. <laughs> I'm not like I said on Massacre, really. I'm not purposely going out there trying to kill myself. No, no, definitely not. The, the opposite, really. I want to succeed, you know. But that's the buzz that you get out of trying to do that. You do end up in that position where it looks like it's gonna be game over at any moment. But those positions, money cannot buy the buzz that you get. Right? Thing that you get that you think that's it game over you don't go into panic around you just oof, this is it game over been in about four of them since i've been racing and i've been racing 10 years now and all of those moments i think three of those moments are at the tt wow dang son mm -mm. i come to the gym a couple of times a week and uh, get out on my mountain bike a couple of times a week i enjoy my training and keeps me focused on the job and I don't like anything to sort of let my riding slip if you know a bit of training is what it takes and that's what I do. I've always been a bike fanatic but my parents have always been against it and uh, by the time I got to 15 I think I'd wore my parents down that much. They were a bit concerned about me getting a road bike so they got me a trials bike and uh, the minute I was 17 I, I took my test and got a road bike so it backfired a bit on my parents but <laughs> you know I met a group of lads that blagged a caravan for free it was an absolute wreck dragged it all over the country it was falling apart and we got to race meetings had a few beers had a barbecue raced all day you know it was just great to experience that side of it natural ability pulls you through to a certain level but if I'm in a race and it comes down to a tight battle and, you know, I lose the race basically through fitness or something, you know, I'd be devastated with myself, so I, I get very obsessed about what I'm doing. And there's only one outcome. There's no way that you can, there's no John Daly's and there's no Tony Stewart's in this type of event. Yeah. Like, you got to be the most fit yeah. of ever one. There ain't no, you know, big dudes like us doing the Alman TT. Oh, hell no. I mean, to be able to pull the G's and find your center of gravity and that they're doing and be able to take a fall. Our weight falling off a bike would crush us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like alone at 120 miles an hour, you know, which horsepower would eat up. I mean, you have to be fit so that way the bike can run at its peak performance. I'm heavy. It's not a Harley. We would do great on Harleys. Oh, yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we're not getting over 70 miles an hour. Right. At least hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe downhill. But um, yeah. <laughs> but no, that's crazy, dude. It, it's yeah. It's different, man. It's just it's a different lifestyle. You know, yeah. these guys are are one in a million that can do this, you mm -hmm. know, and, yeah. and th I would say this, this stuff, along with our deep dive on F1 journey, you know, that's really what made my mind change to accept them as athletes, you know, like yeah. seeing the, the amount of physical stress that they go through pulling those G's, having to be fit, having to be hydrated, all that shit that they have to go right. through just to just to get to the day of like i said there's the anomalies like tony stewart that you know drinking uh and yeah. eating pizza and getting in the car and winning the race but the that's the exception the rule is definitely to be fit 
and have rigorous workout regiments. It's like back in the 80s, there was this NASCAR driver. Uh, you won't believe his name. Dick Trickle. Of course. And, <laughs> yeah, and he was famous because he, he had a cigarette lighter in his car. So on the cautions, <laughs> he would light up a cigarette and take a cigarette break. A true story. I love that. I love that. That is so awesome. That is yeah. so, that's, that's awesome to me. Just like, F it. Just like, hey, uh, why is your car special? Well, I have this cool little boop and just light the cigarette. I love that. I love that. Like, they make all these, like, mods to the car. And, like, what about this? No, leave the cigarette lighter. Leave the cigarette lighter. <laughs> that means he had a pack in his, like, pocket somewhere. He's just, like, he's just cruising. He's cruising. That's what he's doing. That's, right, their, right. that's not what these guys are doing at all. These guys no, are no, no. Like I said, there are no Dick Trickles. There are no Tony Stewart's in the Isle of Man TT. They got to be physically fit. That name is wild. Oh, I kid God. you not. That's his God name. damn it. God damn it. That, the people were different back then. Uh -huh. oh, this is God. the 80s. Yeah. So that, like, the, 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 there's a famous NFL star named Dick Butkus. All right. I know. I knew that one. <laughs> it's just, I forgot like, for a second there. It's just, it's right up there with Dick Trickle and Dick Butkus. <laughs> <laughs> legends. Both legends, legends I guess. Uh, yeah. oh, can't man. take us anywhere. We go off on tangents like that. Yep. But that's why you show up. What? Yeah, that's why I show up. To win the race. Every one of the 37 and three quarter miles of public roads that makes up the course has created a champion or hero. Over 200 corners must be negotiated up to six times to complete the world's toughest road race in the fastest time. There are five races over a week, culminating with a senior TT. With speeds of up to 200 miles per hour and the opportunity for disaster around every corner, its dangers are set in stone. To date, 231 riders have lost their lives wow. on the TT course. And that number has only gone up oh. because this was a documentary from six years ago. So Whoa. it's gone up a little bit. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it's definitely gone up a bit. Mm. Yeah. To win just one TT is an outstanding achievement. The legendary Joey Dunlop has That's an unmatched 26 wins. John McGinnis holds the outright lap record. And Phil McAllen is the only rider to have won four out of the five races Whoa. each year. Wow. No one has ever won five out of five. All right. This is what this man is doing four weeks until the trophy race. Right, um, can I ask Fred, didn't he, sorry, I meant Guy Martin. So the laundry didn't come back. <laughs> yes! I, I called it! Like these two, Guy Martin, Fred Dipna, cut from the same cloth. Yep. Yep. Yes. Wow. I had to get that hate victory yep. in there. You know, I get told off for not saying the right thing or doing this or doing that. I'm not wearing the right clothes. <laughs> and, you know, and I just thought I get on top of you sometimes. I'm not gets on top of you, but he just takes the, takes the fun out of it all. Whereas Wilson, for me, you know, he's doing it for the same reasons I'm doing it. You know, doing it to enjoy it and doing it to win. And I see it as David and Goliath. Um, that's, I think that's what motivates me in many ways. That's perfect, yeah. The guy come back to a small team and can win. Could you call it a deal, Wilson? There weren't really a lot of paper signing going on. Just a firm handshake, I think, Wilson. I suppose I should say, to have a gentleman's agreement, we need two gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't have said I was a gentleman, you know. So, uh, thank you. It's, it's, guys, all right. <laughs> yeah, but we won't go as far as gentlemen. Well, <laughs> you know when I was wanking, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you used to regularly wake up and see a guy pulling them out. Yeah. I had to go back to bed for a few minutes while I finished him sent off. Yeah, because I used to sleep above the cow and I just <laughs> slept above you, didn't I? Yeah. You could tell. I didn't really know that until I brought my ankle right back. I remember that. Yeah. Your toes go, do you know? When, when you wanking. Yeah. <laughs> so when you guys' moment. toes twitching. And you knew I was on it. In the morning, his toes would be going, thinking, yeah. I'll give him five more minutes. Yeah. Grab a load off. Oh, In the build up to the TT, every other race meeting is a chance to perfect the bikes, impress new sponsors, and develop the speeds needed to compete on the Isle of Man. 
Do you have any We're not here for any black times to fuck off. We're not bothered whether we're last or first. We're not bothered. We're just here to support our camp. Just whoever's built them up. Who built them up? Right. You need to be a good mechanic to, you know, to work with me. And I'm a bit awkward to get on with, I suppose, because I'm very particular how I want stuff doing. Most motorbike riders just, you know, get on it and turn the throttle. But I like to know what makes that bike tick. You know, I like the whole idea behind the old internal combustion engine and the way stuff's made. And you need to have a bit of mechanical sympathy, don't you? You can't go charging in there like a bull in a china shop. It's all going to end in tears, isn't it? You end up breaking gearboxes and blowing engines up and all that sort of caper. Still no quick shifter. No, we don't know anyone that's got one. No. Mechanical failure is what all riders dread. Sometimes they're over and sometimes something breaks. Oh! You know, if a part breaks, then it's just bad for everybody. And the TT particularly because where well, you only get one hit and you've got to wait 12 months to have another go. Mm. Mm. I don't have heroes until Chris Mayo. Yeah, he's the boy. Mad him away. You know, lovely bloke. You know, his dogs. Nearly got his dog to talk. Nearly. Likes his grandfather clocks. Makes his own wine. He's got a grapevine growing out his garden through a window that he's chiselled out in his conservatory that grows into his conservatory around there. You know, gets his own grapes, makes his own wine. That's a boy, that, isn't it? Not many folk do that. <laughs> I got an entry to the TT in 73 and uh, I crashed in both races. So I saw more of Noble's Hospital than, <laughs> than the track, really. What I do basically is take a, a road engine and turn it into a race engine. Hmm. My biggest boast, I think, was in the 100th year of the TT, every single winning engine and lap record machine came out of this workshop. Wow! You know, Guy, I think, has got the best bikes he ever could. I shall obviously do my best, and Guy obviously will put the finishing touches to it. If he's happy, he'll be there. I have every confidence that if things work in our favour, we're going to come away with a result. Wow! And one thing I'm concerned about is we mustn't start thinking it's our turn, because it never is your turn. But I think the ingredients are right, if they're mixed properly. Northern Ireland's Northwest 200 race meeting also takes place on public roads and is the very last chance to get the bikes ready for the TT. Oh! See, this is one thing I didn't know too much about. It. It's been thrown at us a couple times in the Nor Northwest 200. I didn't know this was like a... Like a, pre a precursor or like a practice session for the Alaman TT. So this is this is like something like just to get the jitters out, just to test the machines, just to like run what they have into the ground and see what works and what doesn't, right? Kind of something like that. I, I'm sure it's like it has its own merits, its own um, special things going on about it. I'm sure there's people already in the comments saying it's not just a warm up. It's no, yeah, that. but I mean, it's kind of like. If you're saved, you've waited 12 months for the TT, you don't want to risk injury on a 200. You know what right. I mean? You've waited this whole time to get to the big game, the big show. Right. So it's it's, it's yeah. risk versus reward, yeah. more seat time versus uh, saving your stuff. Gotcha. Heads down for the lights above the track. And when they go out, this race will be underway. Michael Dunlop's been mugged, hasn't he? On board with Michael Dunlop then, just looking what was going on in front of him. Where you see him coming down over the hill. 165 wow. miles an hour. Man's corner, that. Wow. Michael Dunlop and his brother William are the next generation of a road racing dynasty that began with their uncle Joey and father Robert Dunlop. Joey Dunlop, who are the biggest road racers, I think that the, the world has ever had, you know, so, you know, the inspiration I got from them was so much. I'm growing up with two people, you never seen them as heroes or superstars, you just seen them as uh, two normal people. Joey blew out the competition when in 2000, aged 49, he won a third hat trick of TT races. He was killed three weeks later in a little known race in Estonia. Over 50,000 mourners wow. attended his funeral. Oh my goodness. His brother Robert was almost killed in 1998 when his rear wheel collapsed in an accident at the TT. But raced for 10 more years until his death in 2008 during the final practice lap at the Northwest 200. No way. He knew the circuit, he knew it well, and I 
mechanical failure happened and, and it happens to you know the best of riders which was you know it was a sad loss to the sport a sad loss to us you know but for some reason i just thought that saturday then i, I wanted to ride the 250. Two days after witnessing his father's death, Michael went on to win the race and reduce the onlookers to tears. Oh, wow. You're only a young man, you know what I mean? All you have for life is a bit of crack, you know what I mean? And you don't think you're going to have to bring on a lot of stuff, so like, I turned in from a boy to a man in a very short space of time. You know, I mean, I hope they're up there now and uh, they're being looked after. Cummins, Connor Cummins, the Isle of Man rider, he's fast, really very fast. Oh, he's down! Oh, wow! He's down! I took the lead from Ryan, just as I was coming out of the corner. The back end sort of stepped out on me and high sided me over the top of the bike. And I was, you know, really, really lucky to come away unhurt there. I just had to pick myself up. I got, you know, dusted myself down straight out on the bike in the next race and fall off a horse, get straight back on it. Guy has taken a tumble too. I'm all right. I mean, bloody hell, it's not bad, is it? I mean, that's been damn. I've just done, I've oh. done that, and my finger, let me see my finger. Didn't have my eye on the ball. You know, so much going on, and uh, yeah, lost my fault. Hit the curb on the inside, took the front, ended up in the grass. Pipe was all okay. We had to put a new rear do, rear do, engine cover, water hose. I didn't wreck it. Michael Dunn up next, uh, Ryan Farquhar, number 77, someone's oh. blown up. That's Guy Martin. Guy Martin, the engine is gone. In the second race, Guy overrevs the bike and blows up his engine. He's completely out of the race. Oh, my God. This was not a good meeting here as far as results are concerned. We had a couple of things that didn't go according to plan. Uh, the, the... Go a couple, a bit more than a couple, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it has been a learning curve. You may think we're a bit old to be learning, but we're still learning. The upside, Guy will go to the TT with that bike and two brand new engines. Brand new. Speed's not bad. We need to work on speed a little bit, but it's not bad. Uh, the stability's good, ambulance good, the tyres are good. We need to work on a few issues, but I think I'm going on my ferry's boat. I'm going in the camper, because otherwise you sat at home. You know, you sat at home just twisting your thumbs, you know, waiting for a phone call. So you might as well be there among it all. Pretty country For over a hundred years, the Isle of Man has attracted riders and race fans to watch their heroes race the mountain course. Modest prize money means that this close-knit band of brothers ride purely for the love of the sport and the glory of winning. If you're born on the Isle of Man, you're sort of brought up with motorbikes and races. You've got the island going from black and white, quiet rural country roads. All of a sudden, they've got teams of bikers going down them. Mm. It's just lovely to see the island come alive. Stories, comfort stories, spirit away to the height of their glory. It's a festival, it's a coming together of everyone who appreciates motorcycling. The stories that are told as you sit at the hedge, or the marshals in groups around the island, are, are all lived and relived every year. And we never get tired of swapping them. Let's just say there's a large segment of the motorcycling population in America that knows well about the TT, as I do, and probably have put it on their, what we call a bucket list, things to do before you kick the bucket, to go to the TT, and that, that's why I'm here. I had the opportunity to come. It's something I've always wanted to do. My father and I have talked about coming here together for years and never did. Um, he's passed away, so it's, it's on me to, to come and enjoy the experience and share it with him however I can later on, perhaps. Well, I wear these leathers for 27 years now, and uh, at least 27 years more I will uh, bring the leathers to the CT. My name's Karen Anderson, and I've come all the way from Australia to watch Cameron Donald race TT. Yeah, that right there, it's a coming together. That's, I mean, that's definitely now a bucket list item of mine, right up there with 
going to a World Cup game, Eurovision, now the Alaman TT race. Yeah. That's up there uh, with for me now. That's that just sounds like a good time because I I dig this kind of bike week over our shitty bike weeks. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's different. It's different. It's different. Different I love vibe, it. different oh yeah, different, different camaraderie. Different people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I dig this. I dig this. We sat above here in, in a room on the balcony and we watched the guys coming around that corner and there was a lamppost there and the lamppost was padded and they would come round dipping and then they'd do that in Not and sure. out to get round the lamppost and that to me was like, heart in my mouth, heart in my mouth, heart in my mouth. Brilliant. Yeah, well, I know what could happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're there on the back, you oh. won't get too quick, else you get beat up. <laughs> it's a very hairy place, very fast, to watch the bravest men in the world. And, and if it doesn't excite you, you're not alive. That's, and that's a fact. Within hours of arriving, Guy is unhappy with the bike's suspension, in particular the swinging arm because of its importance for a fast wheel change. Wilson, can we put the other swing in and get Simon to change it? It's shit. And it's going to go wrong. The bike was given to me in the first place, Wilson. We wouldn't be going through this problem. And I did say this in the first place. So. Guy has upset the authorities too because of his plans to work on the bikes away from the paddock. Mm. I was expecting it to be tension because that's why I've, been, I've stayed out of the way. I've, I've got my airbed that goes in the back of my van. I've just been staying in my van. When it comes to how I want bikes preparing, if they aren't right, that's it. I'll just pack in and go home. I won't stick my neck out if things aren't exactly how I want them. And I'm so meticulous with things. But we're going to meet in the middle. We're going to have a meet in the middle, aren't we? I can't, I can't have it all my way because, I mean, Wilson's bought the bikes and put a lot of money into the bikes. You know, but I'm the one risking my neck out there, and that's why my head needs to be right. And Wilson always has said from the, from the off that my head needs to be right. And then to get my head right, it needs to be my way, which is doing bikes with no interruptions. But yeah, I think we're going to have to meet in the middle, me and Wilson. The bikes will have to be back here at a certain time, and then I'll have to do certain bits of nodding and smiling and agreeing with people. There's a contract, and the team gets it. Man, don't mess with him. Don't get between Guy Martin and his bikes. Well, I mean, it, there's there's a balance, right? I mean, it's yeah. you're, you're, the, you're the dude. You're the dude that gets on this thing. You should have yeah. the most say, if you know what you're talking about. Right, if you know what you're you talking know? about, and you know what you want out of that thing, and you know what you need out of that thing, so you better, your yeah. word better be priority. Yes, 100%. If it doesn't feel right, walk the fuck away. Like, yeah. Text number of pounds, so they expect guy to be professional, and guys sometimes make statements that uh, they don't like. Uh, people like him, maybe it's because there's a bit of a rebel about him, uh, and so on, so... We have to, we just have to make do with what we have. If I dictated the guy, it wouldn't work. It's just a mechanic who is a brilliant rider, a brilliant motorcyclist. Uh, the bikes are ready to race, but he has to have his touch to the bikes. He knows I've given him everything he has asked for. Uh, so, you know, it has to work this time. And the bike will be checked, and checked again for anything, and uh, then when you're in the lap of the gods. It makes a massive difference. If you get this corner right and make a proper job of it, you, know, you can make 10 seconds up because you know you don't break or let go of the throttle for the next three miles. But it's a man's corner, get it wrong, you're um, Balaskari. Balaskari, just in the sign there. Yeah, get it wrong and it's going to work. But you don't think about things like that, do you? you know, if you want a fast lap out, you've got to um, throw your balls to the wall, as it says. Man. The weather. After a bright start today, it will turn cloudy later this morning. Then, although staying mostly dry this afternoon, there could be a little patchy light drizzle possible. I think Guy Martin's real rivals this year will be many fold. Cameron Donald's always been a threat. He's a bit highly strung, but he's fast, real fast. 
Conor Cummings is going to be a big threat. Conor Cummings, local Manxman, is fit as young. Uh, Ryan Farquhar has gone ahead of Joe Dunlop in national wins in Ireland, and it's phenomenal. The Dunlops are coming strong. Michael's really aggressive and got that will to win. You know, I definitely won't want to get in a ring with him anyway. Keith Moore again, he's uh, not going to lead, you know, he's just chomping at that bit to go fast and win. You never know what Bruce you're going to get. If Bruce wakes up in the morning and says he wants to beat us all, he'll probably go beat us up. You never bet against John McGuinness. He's the man at the minute. He's the man with the results on the board. He's the man when you go quicker, he usually raises the bar and goes a bit quicker again. Nobody knows how fast John can go. Nobody has actually taken John to that next level. Yeah, you never underestimate anyone. Someone could come out from the woodwork that you just didn't really expect and you know, shock you. I don't know much about Hutchinson, to be truthful. He's one of the quiet men in the sport. Just does the job, I think. It reminds me a bit of myself, you know, 10 years ago. He's absorbing everything, understanding what it takes to win a big race now. The guy, you know, I think every man and his dog in the world wants something. The guy might to win. And there's no question he's going to win one. He's definitely got the talent. But uh, there's some ingredient missing at the moment, and it just seems to find him. He's going to be the best man that's going to win on the day, at the end of the day. And uh, nobody wants to win it more than I do. As speeds increase, so do... Yeah, some intense, oh, stiff man. competition there. And I feel like in this journey, we're going to see those names a lot, most of them a lot in these yeah. coming days and weeks. Yeah. With the dangers. And it was this that lost the TT its world championship status. But winning at the TT requires more than just speed. It relies on mechanical perfection, supreme mental and physical endurance, a huge dose of good fortune, and a very fast pit stop. A tank of fuel and a set of tires will only last two of the four or six laps required. Pit stops count toward the overall lap time. Wow. And can make or break a rider's chances. Wow, 33.25. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. But if we have one mistake, goes to 40. The swing and amps in the bike now into shape to do a, a fast pit stop. It just happened, the bike I had last year was sold to a bloke on the Isle of Man. And I begged and pleaded with him see if we can borrow the swinging arm back out of his bike to put back in my new bike for this year. So he says, pop up and make it this afternoon and then we'll go tomorrow morning and put it back in the bike. Look, I do with your elf. Guy's father has decided not to come to the race this year. Hmm. It's a bit of an ad. Phil to tech, really, my dad not coming. You know, he's a good man to have involved because he's got so much experience around here. He's rode the TT for 15 years and he knows exactly how things need to be. That give me confidence if he was involved, and now he's not here. It's not a fuck the job, but it's, um, it's made it a lot harder. And it took my eye off the ball a little bit. But what do I do? You can not cry about it, can you? Martin Finnegan, really good friend of mine in racing, in racing. I was at his wedding in, I think it would have been a November time of 2007. Yeah, 2007. And then his funeral was in, April time of 2008, you know. Mm. Oh. Teammate of mine, Darren Lindsay, was killed in 2005. Friend of mine used to do his engines, Richard Britton, he was killed in 2006. You could go on. I just think, <coughs> Man. you know, the time's up. You know, and I think you've got to be in this line of work, you know, and that's why I sort of don't believe in having any commitments of any sort. Because if I... I did have responsibilities as wife, kids, mortgage, and all that sort of thing, but I couldn't give this job, you know, as in racing the TT, I couldn't give it me all. And I want to give it me all. Yep. Yeah, before I can start thinking about winning races, we've got a lot of practice to get through. You know, we've, yeah, five nights of practice to get through. That's not going to be easy. It's a lot of work to do on the bikes. And that's when my dad was going to come in. It's not just going to go straight in the bike. A lot of things I'll need making to get that swinging out to suit the new bike. But if it was easy, every man and his dog would be out, wouldn't they? That right there was an important little monologue that he had right there. I mean, not monologue, but just spitting yep. some real facts right there. Like, this is why he doesn't he's not married and have kids or mortgage or anything tying him down. And also, you know, it's just a part of life in the TT is that you, you're riding with the ghosts of your teammates and those who it yep. was their time when it was their time. Yep. Yep. It's you, you can't give it your all if you're if you're if you're giving yourself to different places, you know, right. If different right. places need a, 
pieces of you, then you're, you can't give it a hundred percent. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's, and, and I'll, I'll tell you this to get off on a tangent. When I enlisted in the military, I, I did that because of that. I had nothing holding me. There was no yeah. ties. I was right. in the wind and I could be, and I, I never understood how people would like families and wives and kids. Like I couldn't imagine the, I mean, there's a weight. It's not just you. It's the whole family. And I'm like, okay, well, this is fine. I can go because I'm solo dolo. This right. is perfect. It fits me. I have nothing to lose. Yeah, you couldn't do that now. No, no. N- hell no. I couldn't. No. Mm-hmm. And so there is a level of you need to be free in order to do this. Yeah. And Guy Martin is free. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. I'll chill out later on. Just like I find a different place every night to keep in my van. Just get me air bed blown up in the back of my van. Bit of a wank and go to sleep, you know. <laughs> Proper. Proper. There's no, you know, people get all, it's not a crime, is it? Tell me what, you know. <laughs> Man. Well, it's private, you know. There you go. You never get complacent with the TT, you know. There's always something you can learn. And, you know, if you get that way and overconfident, it'll bite you. I just went up and had a little moment on my own looking down the road because the road was shut. Wasn't a sound apart from the birds just tweeting away. And that's just something real special about the track itself. You know, I was just looking down thinking, you no, know, next week I'm going to, in the race, I'm going to be going down there at 200 mile an hour plus, you know. The emotion you feel when you roll up onto that start line when you're getting waved off 10 seconds apart, it's just, it's just unbelievable, you know. It's like nothing else I've ever experienced. It's not about beating the next guy. It's about who beats the track. This TT is the most powerful race you'll ever do in your life. I love it, like, it's, it's, it's legal. People often ask, you know, why do you road race? Because um, circuit racing is fast, you can get a buzz, but it's not the same. Circuit racing is rock climbing with a rope. It's dangerous, but there is some room for error. You slip before you've got a rope. Road racing is like free climbing. You know, you climb out that same mountain, you're on a course, but there's no room for error. If you make a mistake, it's, it's gonna be, you know, well, it could be serious injury or worse. You're doing maybe 170, 180 miles an hour, going through fast bends with trees, hedges, brick walls. It's the greatest thing. And you realise the dangers before you put the leg over the bike. I mean, at the top of Bray Hill, before I go out, you know, you have lots of strange thoughts in your mind and you're nervous and you're worried. But as soon as you set off and you get the tap off the start master to go down Bray Hill, that's gone. And then once you're actually out here, the noise, the wind, the physical strain on your body, there's nothing like it. It's just you put yourself through hell and you frighten yourself so many times. But that is the draw. Out there, you can't fake it. You know, there's nothing that you can do that isn't putting you in the moment. And this is it. This is, you know, especially if you ride two wheels, you know, this is about as, uh, as difficult as it gets. Oh! Dikers! I mean, people talk about extreme sports. <laughs> there's nothing more extreme than a reason. One split second. You know, somebody like Joey Dunlop, 31 years of career, 26 TT wins, all those other race wins, all those world championships. One split second. Oh, oh, God damn. Oh, the God. There is no room for error on the TT course. Of all road racing circuits, it is the toughest and most unforgiving. With an average five deaths for every mile, only a lucky few have crashed and escaped unharmed. Milky Quail is one of the lucky ones. Oh my God. Your life revolves around the TT because it's such an immense, passionate thing. Whether you're wow. on the track or off the track, it is a life and death thing. I know it sounds crazy and stuff. I mean, I've, I haven't raced around here now for what eight, nine years, and I still now struggle with life because I can't do it. You know, I can't, I can't get me buzz. It's like you've, you've done the ultimate, and once you can't have that ultimate, then you're a bit like a, you know, a drug addict sort of thing. You just can't, you can't get out of your system. You love it. 
when I'm sat beside the track, you just want to do it, you know, it gives you, you think, yeah, 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 and then, so obviously if you keep yourself busy and whether it's blooming, sweeping the floors or emptying the bins or, you know, taking all the riders around or, you know, meeting dignitaries and taking press around it, it keeps my mind off it, really. Milky looks after the newcomers and shows them around the course. It can take three years of competing to learn it and at least that long to build up the confidence needed to push themselves to the limits. Wow. It's all about confidence. Oh, God, that is tough. You know, this dude, he sees it, but he can't r race it anymore. No. Uh, That's, man, uh... I, feel like, I feel like if you could if you were told you could never eat cheeseburgers again, yet you were like a manager at McDonald's. Like, you were just surrounded by it. Yeah. But you're teaching everybody how to have a good oh. cheeseburger. That would be torture. That would be. That would be. Yeah. It's all about confidence. You need to be confident where the corner's going, how fast you can go around that corner to build up your speed. So I'm still experimenting on how fast I can go a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. As I build up and get used to the corners and the bumps and the rises and the tipping points and the grids and everything, hopefully I'll keep going a bit faster. Get over it, get over it. Oh, in by the hedge, transfer back over the bike again. Oh, into here. And guess what? There's another one here. Oh. That takes you three years to get right. After only two years of competing, Jenny Tenmouth is the fastest woman ever around the course. Wow. And I'll bet you, because I know there's a video game, you know, Isle of Man TT. I think there's the third installment came out um, recently. And I'll bet you anything that no matter how much you play that game, not, it will not prepare you for actually doing the course. Oh, yeah, come on. No, that's like... I would, I would, uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I just, that video game probably makes you think you could do it. Or maybe if you're injured enough and you can't really race anymore, maybe that'll tickle the adrenaline junkie in you. But I, that's, that's tough, man. That's yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just, I feel like none of these guys play that game. You know what I mean? No, no. Cause they <laughs> lived it. Yeah. They, they, they do it every year. Yeah. And look, I, I've done i racing. I I know that I can't hop into a stock car and go win Daytona. I I have that common sense in me. Yeah. You feel like you shouldn't be doing it. It's quite bizarre. You feel um, you do feel cheeky and a bit naughty, you know, to be blasting around the roads. But I think that again, that's half the fun. And like when you set off down Bray Hill, it's just massive big grin. It's like oh, it's just. <laughs> I can come up here, all I'm thinking about is the next corner that's coming up, which is called Balagheri. Um It's affectionately known as Balascari because it is. It's so, so scary. It's so fast, it's the most important, but also the most dangerous corner on the circuit. The big problem with Balagheri is it's on site on your entry point. So as I'm coming up to here now, I'm still hard on the gas, still on the gas, still on the gas. At the 30 mile an hour signs here now, this is where I come off the gas. I come down one gear effectively. I get my head out of the bubble and my head's getting ripped off my shoulders. But at that point also, I'm trying to look to, for my peel in point, but I still can't see it. I know it goes to the right, but where do I turn in? As soon as I see the curve on the inside, I'll lay the bike on its side and drive it. Okay, I just <laughs> fire through right by the curve. So, wow. So fast. Averaging 131.57 miles per hour, John McGinnis is still the fastest man around the course. A hundred years ago, the first race was won at just 38 miles per hour. Throughout its history, even riders with no hope of winning have come to break personal bests and challenge the island's famous course. Riders are always chasing faster and faster lap times. In first place, this is Nick Pro. He's still second. I just think it's got a certain addiction about it. Once you get here, you couldn't let it go. Then you know you're looking at the ultimate lap times all the time and. Uh... I always set out to beat myself more than anybody else, you know. Every year I just thought I'd do faster and faster and faster, which I was actually doing, unfortunately, until the time of my accident, which was really you no know, fault of my own. It's just one of them freak things, you know. In 2009, while leading the race, a hare ran onto the track, causing Nick to crash his sidecar at 160 miles per hour. Yo, come on! I think it just come up, damaged the front part of the, the fair, and uh, come up and hit me in the face, and. That was it, and I had obviously the bike turn immediately right then, and that was it, it's straight into the trees. Wow. Yeah, we were lucky to get away with that one. If we have a, an injury or a fatality, I tend to sort of want to stop 
because yeah I do, I do I feel like a drug dealer sometimes because I'm preparing these engines for these people to go and hurt themselves with and even though it's you know touch wood not my fault you know the people who deal in drugs are worse than the people who take them and so last year we had such a terrible time um, I did so that I wouldn't carry on with the sidecars and then the way Nick bounced back was just I couldn't say no to him at all you know so we, we've got three engines already for him we're doing two more um, his spirit's unbelievable Nick himself won't be riding. Instead, his own race team will attempt to break the sidecar lap record, which wow. has stood unbroken since his accident. You have to find Guy. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a problem with his license. Have you got a problem with your license, Gary? <laughs> Typically, Guy is nowhere to be found, and he won't be eligible to practice without his race license. Until he returns, the bike can't go through scrutineering. Oh, oh my, my God. God. He doesn't even have his license? Oh, come on, dude. Uh, You're messing up step one. <laughs> yeah. God. We, we knew this dude was a free spirit, but that's a little too free. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh, my God, dude. Oh. oh. Dang. <laughs> This team must be so pissed at him, man. I'd be like, bro, really? We're all up here. We're all the emotions are high as fuck. And you're out here just dilly-dallying somewhere in the countryside. Like, fix your shit, bro, so we can rock the world. Like, Yeah, that's it, uh, man. That's it. Ugh. I don't know where he is, as usual. He'll be here in a bit. Oh, fuck. Guy Martin, where do you start? He is a maverick. <laughs> He's an eccentric. He's always got something good to say, although a lot of the time it comes out it's not broadcastable. <laughs> He's a bit old school. He's a bit what we grew up with, what we used to be. Guy's a, a fabulous personality. I don't think Guy really knows exactly what he wants to do. He's got a lot of different loves in his life. I'd like to see him win around here, but if you're not careful, you run out of time. Guy's colourful character. It's an attention seeker, isn't he? You know, he loves a bit of attention. He's had green shorts on for two years. I mean, they must be stinking and growing legs by now. But that's what racing's all about. We need characters in there, you know. Guy is what he is. I mean, he talks pure rubbish, but he's funny. Guy says it as it is. And I think that's why he's so popular with people. He's not worried about upsetting the uh, hierarchy. Guy Martin's Guy Martin, and nobody would want him any other way. I mean, he is a true grit. and He's a John Wayne of motorcycle racing. At last, Guy returns after blowing <laughs> up a friend's classic bike in the south of the island. There you are. Now. Spot on. Well, right right. Yes, he got it. The roads will be closing in half an hour, and tonight's practice will start at 7 .30. Guy's race license approved. The team can finally make it through <laughs> scrutineering with the bikes. first pit stop and my eyes were on stalks, you know, you could see the whites in my eyes all the time. You come to TT and your body's unfamiliar with it to start with. Stuff's just going past so fast. Standing start lap 125 mile an hour, you know, first lap, and it's like, I must be mad. It's spectacular, and when you've just, you know, plodded along and you rode by thinking you were a legend riding fast, you, you know, it's like a totally different thing when you see the race bikes come through. You know, you might have driven to the pits that morning, so your top speed for the day so far is maybe 40 miles an hour. You let the clutch out, and within a couple of miles, you're pushing 200 miles an hour between, you know, stone walls and hedges. So it takes a bit to get your head up to speed. 
But then you settle down, you start relaxing and getting more and more comfortable with the circuit. You start going faster, you start becoming smoother, you start breathing properly. You do go into like this weird sort of state of mind where everything starts slowing down. You start moving your eye line, starts lifting so much and your brain starts working so much ahead of yourself. You're thinking like maybe four or five corners ahead. It's all about momentum and keeping your rhythm up and not getting into any uh, stupid battles with people, you know, you've got, you've got to be really using your head. I'm a real hard rider to ride with. If you, you want to want to race off me, you know I mean? You're going to have to be willing to wrap around a post, you know what I mean? And that's the way I race motorbikes and uh, that's the way I push and I'll push any man to the better end. If they want to play ball, you know, they can play with me, you know. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when you we knew that was bike coming. Cam and six gear, never close throttle. This is uh, it's also for me. You know, I ride the bike for many years. And say, wow, wow, really wow. It's crazy, dude. Even after all these years, to talk to somebody about the Art of Van TT course, the hair stands up on the back of your neck, and you remember. And I'll never ever forget my first flying lap at the TT, going over St Ninian's Crossroads down down Bray Hill and I thought I'd come off the end of the world. Really, I thought I'd ridden off the end of a cliff. You, know, you just feel you could fly, really. Most of the times you do. Where's Guy, Johnny? <laughs> Where's Guy? Just walking up here. Guy's bike has been impounded because on his return, he has illegally ridden it through the town. Uh, what, for riding through the old area there or riding through the town? Uh, riding through, through the town, town probably. Oh. You're supposed to read that bit before you go out. <laughs> but I didn't see you as you were waiting for the grid. Oh, that's telling you not to do what you did. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, Mr. Craig, this is, this is where you come in. <laughs> team back, team back. I'm going to blame you, Charlie. Yeah, I'm blaming you, yeah. <laughs> ah! he, he should just have an exception to that. Cause he's guy freaking Martin. <laughs> you don't mess with guy uh, Martin. <laughs> of course, of course he takes it through town. It's like he probably is like, I just wanted to eat, and I'm not gonna yeah. take my bicycle. So I want to ride my fucking motorcycle. <laughs> just yeah. Of course, of course he does. I heard there's a new burger joint, and I just wanted to get there pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh what a oh dude. Oh my god. I wonder how he would do if he was to do the 24 hours of lemons. Like he would, he would probably be a a either he would be overjoyed that nothing is near that speed, but it's it's like a mechanic's wet dream, dude. Yeah. Like the 24 hours of lemons. Mm -hmm. He would I think he would either just be in a drunken super the whole time because be, and, and like he would be a, a very how is it high functioning alcoholic, you know. Well, he, apparently he doesn't really drink. So, what? yeah, okay, he said well. it right at the beginning. He doesn't drink. He doesn't really um, do drugs or you know chase women. So yeah, it, well, machines it are his fun. high. <laughs> I bet. I well, then he would be high as a kite, working with yeah. broken down stuff. Right, right. That's his wheelhouse, and. But then again, part of Lemons is is whoever took the worst thing and did the most with it, not exactly who wins the race. So, yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would love to see him do the 24 would, hours of Lemons. I would love to see him try, you know, yeah. and see what he would win. He would just win. Like, regardless of what the win is, he would win. Like, yeah. he wouldn't stop. Right, exactly. Oh, Oh, okay. Mega. Mega. Where's Rob? He's got his arm. Must be perfect. No problem. Oh, mm. more badges. Yeah. Oh, Every man. year. <laughs> Guy will get his bike back once he apologizes. <laughs> Who do I go see for a volcano? Can, can I take my bike? Can I take my bike? You want a chip? Oh, man. I know you're on a diet. Help yourself. Thank you very much. Well, I'll get in there. Right, good luck to you, boys. Thanks, lads. All right. All right, boss. Got Bill. Cheers, boys. Okay, we have. We got it back. That fucking mustard that I bought. Is that got the same sprocket? 
Harry Lowe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> Absolutely two weeks of my life. <laughs> that was perfect right there. <laughs> that uh, was perfect. I guess, um, <laughs> I guess he wasn't, he wasn't late for pub time. Anytime is pub time. Right, right. <laughs> oh he was God. like, oh, all right, I won the race. All right, all right, can, all right can, can I go to pub now? Yeah. All right. Hey, what about the bike? Don't worry, we'll pick it up afterwards. I yeah, guess well, that's why that's why there's no like street facing doors. Nope, nope. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> it's just something that that to me is like the World Cup pump. It's just 50 years of my life is 100, 100, 100 weeks. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. The atmosphere the friends have made from all around the world, see every year, lose some, gain some. It's just something special. Wow. Wow. Yeah, look at that. People say to me, oh, you've got children, you, you know, you shouldn't be allowing him to do it, but you took racing away from Dan and it would just be the end of Dan's wheels and I can't do that to him, you know. He's my husband, I love him, so I have to support him. You're up on the grandstand sitting together, you know, with the rest of the families and the rest of the wives, you know, you're all nervous, but you kind of have to sort of have a little joke and a laugh and it's amazing the strength that comes from within, really, with, with all of everybody together, you all sort of club together and get yourself through it, really. The road race is great defence, is always the same thing. Every single one of them is the same thing. It will never happen to me. But somewhere in there, they know very well that it can happen to them. And between those two places, there's a lot of ways of dealing with it. I won the same crash helmet for the last 11 years, and you know, I always wear a certain pair of socks throughout the whole fortnight. And I always uh, drop a penny down my leathers as well before the start of every race, yeah. It makes no difference whatsoever, but I'll wear pink knickers if it was going to make me win. Did <laughs> you get passes in that, yeah? No, I ain't got all of them You need the pass. I don't. Can't get the pass without the pass. No? No, that's the rules. That's the tight area, you do. What? That's what you need. You need the pass. I'll stick you back up the fence. Cheers, mate. I'll pass back up the fence. Cheers, mate. I'll stick you down there, boy. Like, does this dude not see the mutton chops and the, you know, what? the Elvis haircut with, oh, and, what? you know, this, this dude? <laughs> the fuck? Like, come on. <laughs> How do you not know who this guy is? It's, I love that. I love that. That dude, you know what? Give that guy a raise. Give that guy a raise. Like, you know who he is. You know yeah. who he is. It'd be like, sorry, Michael Jordan, you can't get on the basketball court because you don't have your jersey on. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get mm. out of here. I love that man. Mm. He's like, he rules are job. rules. Rules are rules. Yes. <laughs> like, fuck yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. What, what a legend. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. There's no question that the Isle of Man TT represents uh, kind of the last <laughs> bastion of the freedom of choice. And to come to a place like this and to have something so... Truly, you know, potentially dangerous, uh, be welcome, really, is refreshing. It's charming. It's, it's all of the things that should be allowed to go on other places. I mean, we're human beings. Life isn't a dress rehearsal. You only get one lap. Why not make it a good one? This is where I start the mountain climb. 
So this one I have to slow down for, back down to second gear, boom! I get into the wall, into there, I have to come through here, the bump just there, bang! So we run now up through this little right hand kink here, still flat, still flat, on the power, 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 underneath the wall, off the power, down one gear, boom! Back on the power now to drive, under, drive, 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 back down to second gear, boom! boom. Back on the power now, pull the bike straight, get up, get up, get the driving on, up towards these little left hand kinks here. So this first one here, just get back underneath there. <laughs> Out towards the tree on the right hand side of the road, right to here, okay? So we run up to now to go to Guthrie's, okay? Guthrie's is the third most important corner on the circuit. We've got three left hand bends here, okay? But it's very steep. This is the one, get the first one right. Get into that one, into there, out to the right line, back into number two, out to number three, wow. just there. See the corner on the brakes hard. Down three gears, one, two, three. Back into there, back on the power, drive it through, right towards the white line, back over towards the external white line, back in then underneath this one just here, feather in the throttle, there we go, lovely, nice wheelie. Bang. Bang. Over the next seven days. And this is like a long course and Man. they're completing this thing in like 17 18 minutes 17 yeah. what, 40 what, something seconds was I the think record they said I think. like 39 miles or 35 miles something yeah like that. That's yeah crazy, something like dude. that yeah and this dude was doing it in a car like that would be the full day right that, there that's the dude so that's the dude that um that had the accent who who shows the people around right yeah and that's, yeah, that's what him. he's he's kind of like I wonder. I wonder. Is there is there a way to to drive the TT course for the TT course? Probably way after the race is done, you can probably drive it because it's a regular road, right? Right, it's a regular road, so I would assume you could drive it. Yeah. Like, Interesting. Like when I went, when my ex and I went to Daytona Beach, like we were able to drive where the original Daytona Beach oh. course was, the thing oh. they did before they built the super speedway, we were able to race that. So if that's possible in Daytona, I'm certain that's possible yeah. in the Isle of Man. And the one thing I want to bring up before we, we unpause it is, is I understand why there's a small purse of, of money to be made at the end is because big corporate backers that well, technically you keep the, the race pure when there's not a lot of corporate backers corporate right, right. backers don't back things that have the potential of death at right. such a high risk you know right. like, that's yeah that's why formula one and nascar have such big money is yes. because there's very little risk of death despite the fact that it is it is motorsports and it's there's always that risk but there have been a lot of steps taken to reduce the risk of death of competitors yeah. crew and spectators yes. to next to nothing yes and this is why i think that the the money is not there is because no one wants to put their name on something that where people die you know right. it's just right. you don't want that look you don't want that look and, and that's probably why it's such a small winning yeah monster so, energy that's, monster that's the energy. biggest corporate sponsor i've seen of this thing is yep. monster energy yep. Yep. yeah there will be many scrapes and near misses seven cracked vertebrae four broken ribs five life-threatening incidents two bruised lungs and unfortunately much worse oh, no just what we were talking about in that supply <laughs> what? Tea. Yeah. Get us tea and get early start in the morning. Boys, no. That the plan, Wilson. What's the plan? These boys are asking what the plan is. You're, you're, the wisdom. plan is you're raiding the bike. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's it. Sorry. Go on. Well, obviously, a fair bit of mist up here in Douglas at the moment around the area here, but it is clear up on the top of the mist. Starting off with the TT Superbike race, six laps of the course, miles. A reminder, this is a time trial. They go at 10 second intervals, so they're racing the clock just as much as each other. Most of all, of course, they race themselves. They race tradition. They race the history of the mountain course. We're one minute away from the start of racing at this year's TT. The laws of average tell me he's going to win. I would like him to win the first race, because I believe that will settle them if it wins the first race, they won three or four. 
I really believe in it. And it is a Suzuki that sets us going. There goes Bruce Anstey with Mist still rolling along Glen Crutchery Road, but we are racing. And there is the number one machine of Bruce Anstey, looking very compact there through Union Mills. And there is John McGuinness, the fastest man in the history of the mountain course. And here's Hutchie with two wins last year, across on a superbike. And next off is number eight, 28 years of age. Here comes Guy now. It's fast down Bray Hill. It's Anstey. And here we go. We're on. Two together. John McGuinness leads on the road ahead of Bruce Anstey. Number six, Cameron Donald's closing the gap between him and Keeper Moore. They've got a battle on there, the advantage being held by Cameron Donald. But he is Guy Martin now, and he's quick. John McGuinness has had an amazing start to this race, but Connor Cummins, the local lad, is right behind him, only eight hundredths of a second down in second place. Mm. Back here in the grandstand, I can tell you from my screen that Connor Cummins has taken the lead and Malaf on corrected time, a three-second lead over John McGuinness, but John clearly has problems because at the Selby speed trap he's gone through at only 136.4 miles an hour. So clearly problems with John McGuinness and the big Honda. But off to Ramsey and Roy Moore. Well, they said it was going to be close and it certainly is because Guy Martin, see, oh my goodness, Guy Martin was nearly taken out oh, there wow. by Michael Dunlop, but it was close. Connor Cummins, number 10, leads by six seconds from Corey and Hutchinson. Instead of third place, Guy Martin just one second down at Hutchinson. John McGuinness is a retirement on Selby Strait. What a disappointment. The King of the Mountain is out on the first lap, but on with the show. Number four, who is leading on the road. Number ten has increased his lead to 14 mm. seconds over number four, Ian Hutchinson. We could see uh, Manxman on the top of the podium for the first time for several years. Cummins has got a fantastic lead now, 21 seconds. If he can just hang it together, wow. there'll certainly be some Guinness drunk in the swan in Ramsey tonight. <laughs> Lap time 130.496. So here's Connor now. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's 131.511 by Connor Cummins. And wow, what a performance by the man from Ramsey. Well, the light came on at Promley Mona to signal the arrival of number six, Cameron Donald, but he's failed to appear. Now, we reckon that Cameron may have made a mistake on that lap, so possibly an overshoot at side. Oh, no. That's no. For that. There we've just got another machine coming in now, it'll be Guy Martin, it's in now, Guy's just coming into the top of the pit lane now, and it's Connor, it's on the way, he's just been told there, bring it home, Connor, bring it home, he knows he's got a 21.1 at Glen Helen on this lap, 23.3, well that's the klaxon going, Hutchie leaves now, and Cameron, he'll be kicking himself for that mistake, he's now dropped to 13, oh, Connor stalls, Connor stalls! Oh, that's not good. Going in and out, just one fire up, and quite a bit of time, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, oh, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine! Oh, that is huge. Passed into the speed limiter there and nails it, Charlie Lambert. So a 21 second lead and all of a sudden it was down to four seconds. 17 wow. seconds disappeared during the course of that problem of getting the big ZX-10 fired up again. Wow. So it's all to play for then in the final two laps and there's some work to be done by Cameron to eat into Connor's lead. So Connor Cummins, Ian Hutchinson, Guy Martin and uh, Michael Dunlop, those are the top four. The order is the same, but the gap has most certainly changed. Interesting. First of the late numbered runners now in pit lane. And here's number 26, Paul Dobbs, racing with the Kiwi on his helmet. And there's Jenny away now. And we've just had news that Connor's missing. Connor Cummins missing here at Glen Helen. Wave yellows out here as a machine comes into view now. No, it's not Connor either. Missing. That's number eight. Guy Martin, Connor missing at Glen Helen. Yeah, I can tell you what's happened to Connor. He's a retirement mechanical failure at Laurel oh. Bank. A retirement at Laurel Bank with mechanical failure. Huge disappointment there for Connor. Oh no. my god. Oh my when, god. When they, when they said Connor was missing, like, I. My mind immediately went to the worst. Oh, yeah. Did yours do? I, no, no. Because I thought, see, what happens is when it's like roll like this and, you you know, you're you're thinking five steps ahead, sometimes maybe you miss a turn. And it's very probably easy to do, right? And you're yeah. on a side road. You're like, well, shit. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there goes. The, and at that point, you miss a turn, might as well go sightseeing because you're gone. You're talking right. about... <laughs> A four-second grace period. Might as well just drive to the airport 
like yeah just yeah like i'm done or the ferry the ferry <laughs> drive to the, the ferry, ferry. Yeah. yeah drive to the yeah. ferry just pack it in you're good you're good to go but um no i just i just don't because there's so many people that have eyes everywhere yeah. you know that that the missing I, I just you know i think they know when it crashes you know right. what i mean there, I, there's going to be debris everywhere yeah, and there is a team that has the task of finding missing riders. <laughs> so they have they have that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> to think about. So it's Ian Hutchinson, number four, who's leading on the road. It's number eight, Guy Marshall, ooh, into ooh. second place for now. And with one, two, three, into view now. Those three are going to have a real old scramble. It's going to be well worth looking at. It's not only Connor that has bad news. We've just heard that the new timing system here in the pits has claimed its first high-profile victim, with Guy Martin picking up a 30-second time penalty. That's moved him down from what would have been second place down to fourth place. So ooh. off the podium for Guy. And Ian Hutchinson, the 30-year-old from Bingley in Yorkshire, is the leader of the Superbike GT. With Wait, Michael what? Dunlop now in second place. I know it's Hutchie winning, but keep an eye on number six, Cameron Donald, despite that excursion at signpost, finishing the race very strongly indeed, and that final place on the podium is not nailed just yet. I mean, good for Connor for coming back, but I I hope that once this plays out, they'll say what happened to Guy Martin, because yeah, that... because it said a time, like a pit stop discrepancy yeah, or something like that? Something like that, a pit road penalty, uh... I would be curious to see what happened. Interesting. Yeah. See the checkered bike is now being prepared. Here comes the wheelie of Ian Hutchinson, and Ian Hutchinson wins on the Padgett Honda. Final results, she Hutchy won, Dunlop two, Donald three, Guy Martin finishing in third place, and it was a time penalty that took off Guy so dearly. So when I was in pit lane, I heard him announce that Guy had gone through speed lane too fast oh. and there was a time penalty against him now that's all i've heard when the guy was told he just jumped off the bike got into his van he didn't even take his helmet off but i'm sure he will come back again that's a big disappointment to guy it was a speeding penalty too fast on pit road oh yeah that is that's heartbreaking right there God damn it. That's, hey, you know, rules are rules, man. Yeah, but I think there's four more races, so there's four more opportunities here. Yeah. You know, he's just done 224 miles at, at those speeds, and then I'm told we're penalizing you for nothing. Such a tiny thing, 0.1 over 60. There shouldn't be a 30-second penalty. Five, possibly. That's harsh. They're measuring um, the average speed over a distance. Now, who's to say that their distance that they're measuring over is accurate to within a millimetre? We have book rules and regulations, by the way. And unfortunately, I, I, I perhaps also ought to say that in the matter of timekeeping, uh, the timekeeper has word is law, and he records what are then considered to be matters of fact, from which there is no protest or appeals. OK. Yeah, well, that's it. Monday's a new day, isn't it? And, you know, Guy's got another two races on Monday. So, you know, as long as Guy turns up this evening open-minded and puts today's race behind him, you know, he's got another Superbike race as well on Friday. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just move on from it. Man. That's tough. action on the mountain course two races 600 cc <laughs> machines on first and 10.45 guy martin has flitched them from the start and the last guy martin is still leading the race by just over a second from ian hutchinson with dan mead in third place guy martin is here at ramsey hairpin left one and he still leads and he looks mm. determined today News from the top of the mountain from the bungalow is that Ian Hutchinson has halved the gap on Guy Martin and it is Ian Hutchinson who leaves at the end of the first lap. Guy Martin obviously likes that stretch of course between the grandstand and here because he's consistently quicker but Hutchinson seems to get in on him everywhere else. His trouser bulging excitement here. Guy Martin is leading the race. Now Ian Hutchinson has gone back into the lead. It's Guy Martin back into the lead. There's Hutchie now leading on the road. Oh, as quick as that. Charlie 
what's the difference this guy comes in? 3.3 seconds, so Hutchie has been going away a little bit. Guy Martin's been told that you can do this, and I'm sure there's thousands of you out there would like him to do this. The guy have problems there on the way, we heard a lot of shouting. Guy goes through with Keith Abbott hot on his tail. Michael Dunlop slots into third, but it is Ian Hutchinson who's extended the lead. It's now over four seconds. Stand by your bed because the news from Balaf is that Guy Martin has halved the gap. Ian Hutchinson is coming towards the end of the race, and Guy Martin has now got it down to less than three seconds at the clock. Guy Martin is having the laugh of his life. But is it going to be enough to give him his first victory here at the TT? And Hutchie crosses the line right now, but where is Guy? He started 40 seconds after Hutchie. We've started the stopwatch, and we're going to be counting it all the way down to those 40 seconds. 30 seconds. 38, it's 39. It is victory for Ian Hutchinson ah. by 3.03. Guy Martin is in second place. Michael Dunlop is in third place with a final lap of 126.587. The 1-2-3 is Hutchinson, Martin and Michael Dunlop and it's down to Chris Kidney. I don't know where... Um, Tim, where's your guy gone to, actually? <laughs> God <laughs> damn it! <sighs> Did not come into the winner's enclosure. He went straight up the return. I'll have to find out what's going on there. Okay, Charles, can you see? There's people on the paid the rules, it's nothing to do with us. Hey. Paul's trying to do his job. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not Paul. Paul just made the rules. Now this is me. Being. No, we're really proud of you. It's just please. 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 Yeah, guy, I'd be upset, but I wouldn't take out on the people that's supposed to be yeah. me. Man, that is salty right uh, there. Just, I get it. I, I mean, listen, you, you, you have to have an ego, and and, and I mean, in, I'm not saying that in a like a condescending kind of way. You got to yeah. have one. That's what gives you the edge. That's what like all these F1. Formula uh, F1 racers have is an ego because they're competing at such high speeds, high levels. You know, yeah. he's already off the podium. He's trying to get ready for the next headspace for the next race. Right, right. He's his mind is already on the next one. Yeah, like so. Let's not pout over this one. Yeah, but but you know, it, it is what it is. There is some pageantry in this. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you have to that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I get it, man. But yeah, that is kind of salty. I would, I don't know. I would do the same thing. But fuck it. Second place. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, won't even go up on the podium. Oh. Yeah. Point one one two. Whoa, 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 guys, guys, brakes, brakes, front brakes, front brakes. I'm gonna hold this bomb in a minute. Now then, boss. All right, where'd what? you go? Sixty point one one two. That's you, boys, being picky. Is he me being picky? I'll do what I want at my speed. So this is Saturday's race you're on about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right. no. we'll let you get down the bottom there and we'll have a longer chat later on. Okay, Guy, thank you very much. Guy's off there now. So that was a, a bit of a Guy Martin protest we saw there. You going straight in. If I walked at point one one two over a kilometre an hour, do you know how far I go? Point one one two over a kilometre, how far is that? Let me see you. Get a grip. Get a grip. Get a grip. <laughs> like this is any little kid who's trying to who's not having it when his mom is trying to take a first day of school picture yep this is it he's like bro look at the camera this this is a memory for this dude on number one you know like just 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 be there in the moment for this dude you know like he doesn't man. care about those other dudes he's cares about himself i know uh but still like God, by on, nature man. as as a wheel man you've got to be a bit selfish yeah you and have to. it's yeah <laughs> you have to be it's funny though it it's is funny. it is <sighs> man there's the applause Richly deserved as well. It's been a terrific morning's racing, and these guys will remember this for one reason or another for a very long time. And Guy Martin is not hanging around at the top of the podium. He's already making his, <laughs> making his bottle of bubbly with him, though. Tell me about how you feel. They've been awkward with me. I'll be awkward with them. I'll do things. They want you. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You know, press this, press that. Fuck out. Now, they've been awkward with me. I'll be fucking awkward with them. That's simple. No problem. No problem. Don't worry, that's only the tip of the iceberg. You wait till I win a fucking. <laughs> I don't even think about it really, man. Just agree with them. You're better off. Out, I say, was just out grapes. Anything at all, I say. I could have said out. 
So I'll, I had to do an interview yesterday morning. You know, I just said, oh, I was happy to finish fourth. Happy. It's where I want to be. Obviously, <laughs> not I want to win it, yeah. But they're not helping you with the kids like that. Like, oh well. Worst things happen to see, we're still here, aren't we? Yeah, we're going running well. Obviously, not well enough. Don't you be me? Yeah, I know what needs to be done. Well, there's another three races left yet, isn't there? It'll come. Well, it is like, it, I don't know who, who, what football player it was, NFL player, that was like, after a game was like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. That's, that's, yeah. that's his vibe. <laughs> like, I'm just here for a picture and I'm out. Like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask me questions. Just, yeah. just, just do your shit and I'm gone after this. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Bush did that in, uh, a post-race interview too once he's he also said i'm just here so i don't get fined just <laughs> it was so yep. salty <sighs> And that is the race leader, Ryan Farquhar, really looking dialed in. Something must have gone wrong at the start, the guy who was well outside the top ten. It's Hutchie's victory by 1.3 seconds. Hutchie, Ryan and Connor in that order. It's Patrick Hutchie winning three GTs in a week and there are still two solo GTs to go. Oh my God. I it absolutely everything I could and just unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. After that, I hear the ocean beat up on the shore right side my room. Calling me out from sleep to listen to a graceful tune. She makes me feel alive, her power more than words can say. Some chills through my purse, all clears my head to face my Ah, alright driver, are you? What do you know? Not all. Well, I just started watching some onboards by getting a plan of attack, so if... Jeffrey is from 2002, and then bits of Uchi. I'm going through the tight sections too hot, and then I'm losing the run onto the long straights. I see the sun rise up into a cloudless sky of blue I've just seen Paul Dobbs, just maybe going to have a word with their dog. Good morning, Paul. How are you doing? What about today's conditions? You had your sat when you woke up this morning, you must have thought, oh no. Oh, teammates with Oatsy this year and he assures me that it's going to come right, so... All right, Paul, I'll let you get together and get warm. It looks freezing. You're looking as if you're not ready for a race either. Nah, well, yeah, I mean, that's not safe, either. It's not safe, can't go racing, I ain't racing. Oh my goodness. So they do call it all for, for rain. Yeah, I, yeah. I would hope um, so. <laughs> like, but God. that wasn't always the case. Uh, I think it's a more re in recent decades. Really? Not in recent years, but recent decades. Holy shit, that dude. Some people lost their lives because of fog. Like, they'll push it off a day if uh if they oh, need yeah. to oh yeah do like I a was, double header i was 100 percent with guy martin like bro if it's raining if there's moisture on the ground guess what guess who's not racing this guy like right period period right 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 i mean formula one they've had ring tires like forever in nascar they just introduced ring tires on ovals and but yeah but this thing th there's no way there's Ring no. tires ain't gonna save you. No. There's more than just that that no. you need to and, survive. And if it's, yeah, and if it's a shit like storm like system, guess what? Guess who's waiting another twelve months? Me, while I have life. You know, yeah. I'll take it as the universe telling me something. Like, you know what? You're good. Go race. 
I'm tough. Yeah. I'll yeah. get you in the next. I'll get you next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's your mindset. You're like, yep, that's my day. <laughs> that's my day. Yep. See you next year, guys. I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm going home. <laughs> God. Very strong. Keith Amor on the pace is in third. Michael Dunlop is here and he still leads, but only by 1.82 seconds. The difference is only 1.82 seconds. No, I think he's got it. He has because Michael Dunlop crosses the line, but it is Ian Hutchinson who has won the race. And wow. Is that? He has made the most amazing piece of history here today. The first man in history to win the first four TT wow. races and only the second man after Philip McCallum to win four in a week. Wow. Ian Hutchinson, the new king of the mountain. No question about that. Wow. Uh-oh. James McBride away now. Next away will be New Zealand's finest Paul Dobbs and right behind is Welshman Paul Owen. Great to see the man from Len Gothlin here once again. Well, we're on the start line and then shake hands with your mates and always wish them all the best. I set off behind my mate Paul Dobbs because you're 10 seconds apart. You can count them when they just disappear. You start counting. You can hear them coming down from the campsite down in the dip and then back up. You can hear them speed coming out there and you can tell the men from the boys because they gear down, they drop a cog down um, and then they, they ease off slightly, then they open it up and rip it around the corner. But I have to say the top boys, they just don't bother, they just keep it going flat. He just came around the corner so well, clipped it, the bike went, the, the height of the bus stop, it just went straight up and the height mm. of the bus stop that's down there. Oh like a battle round. I was just closing on him and then we come up to Balagheri and I just seen him go off into the corner and then the yellow flags come out so I knew uh, there'd been an incident so he, I'd really blown the engine or crashed so I could like hear the other riders come in so I just grabbed the flag and just run into the track to slow the other riders down. The medics tried everything they could for him mm. but yeah, he'd have been cheesed off if he'd have been in the car and got squashed by a tractor or some like that. Like, like we're here, we race, we know the dangers. It's not tiddlywink or whatever. Well, yeah, that's why everybody gets on if you can help each other. But sadly, he lost his life to the sport that he loves. Like so, just one of them, mate. Man. Damn, dude. R.I.P. Let's pour one out for him. I had yep. one of those moments, you know, that happen at some point, once or twice during every TT fortnight. And I just stand and look around, and and everything you see, the bikes, the overalls, you know, you hear that siren, pit entry siren, or everything going on. I just thought, I love this. And I actually thought, <laughs> stupid moment of clar- clarity. God, I'd miss this if I couldn't have it, because something happens to Dobsey. <laughs> an hour later. Sums it up right there. Anyone could mm. lose their partner tomorrow. People step out under a bus. People are lost every day. You, you talk about that and joke about it all the time, you know. Oh. I might not be here next week, is what people yep. say. But when it is part of your consciousness, even a subconscious part, it really does make you love life. It makes you appreciate who you've got and what's special about them and just how lucky you are. The reason we make that choice to go racing is just the whole, um, you know, we're here for a good time. What can, you know, how can we get the most fun out of life? And we want the kids to share that as well. They're, they come along, they love it, they're part of it. Because we had that time with them, it's made us who we are, it's made them who they are. You know, they're, they're incredible. Um, they're strong, 
they're fun. And we have fun, you know, we have so much fun. It doesn't stop. And we're gonna keep on having fun, you know. Ride the bikes, play the music, dance in the kitchen. You know, still love the TT, still love the island, you can't change that. You can't love the death, you can't love the loss, but you can't love the, the excitement and the thrill without knowing that that's part of it. It wouldn't be so exciting if it didn't have the risk. That's why they want to do it. This is Friday, senior day. This is the day we've all been waiting for. It's the final, and it's the, the race of the year as far as we're concerned. The big prize, people call it the power and the glory. It just means so much. So we will be putting a big effort into this, a huge effort. Everyone's ready, and Guy is up for it. So uh, he's just arrived. <laughs> That's on the, on the dirty old bicycle, the pushback. Who's going to take this year's senior title? Will it be an unbelievable five for Ian Hutchinson? Can John McGuinness... At a second, at a fourth, yesterday, at a fifth in the... So I've not had the best of weeks, really. There's a few little issues in the way I just bike set up. But it's all food for thought. And I've got to try and take them through into today's race and go play the part and see what I can do. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try my hardest, but then sometimes I've been looking, I've been watching on boards, I've been watching this and watching that, and am I trying too hard? And I think I look in a couple of places and I am, and that's what's holding me back. So, yeah, I'll put my finger out. That penalty, I didn't feel really hard, but done by it. Worst things happen at sea. I just come sat in here with my helmet and my boots, my gloves, my leathers and all that shit on, and just sat here and... At the time, if someone had come in here, if Mr Speedgun Man or whatever had come in here, I'd have thresh the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but, really... Mr. Spiegel, man, I had a thresh fuck out of him. I'm not a fighting man, but there's a time and a place for everything. And something's like that going on. Point, whatever, it, I don't even get me started on it. <laughs> One four so far, and it'd be great to get the fifth, and, you know, it'd be the fairy tale story. But, uh, obviously, uh, everyone's been gunning out to get me all week, and I think in some respects, the pressure's kind of off them, with it just being one person that's done it all week. What more can they do? It's not as if... You know, there's been four different winners and they haven't won one. It's just, I think maybe the pressure's off them a little yeah. bit. But um, on the other side of it, it's the last race this year. And, you know, if they really are determined to win a TT this year, this is this is a last chance. One of those Cummins posters around yet, but uh, there'll be a big grand of support for the local boy. If you go out there with Ed Ryald, you know, if I listen to Rage Against Machine before I go out, you're going out there with the wrong frame of mind. So I'm going to go out there and listen to, I think I might have a bit of Otis Redding on before mm. I go out. Nice. Yeah. Smoke me ten Bensons. <laughs> Drink ten Benson. That'll do, will it? Yeah, I'm taking. I'm not taking up smoking. I'm taking up smoking after July. But there's been a few moments in this past couple of weeks where I've just thought, but I've not. I've not, I've, I've not smoked. So I think a bit about it's reading on the start line. And pretend to smoke a fag. And take it as it comes. Yes, I knew it. I knew he, would, he didn't have any vices. I mean, he, he is so dejected and so pissed that he has not won a single race this whole time man. that it's driven him to smoke, for lack of better analogy. Yeah, but, man, that dude Hutchinson, man, is cleaning up shop, dude. Yeah, yeah. No one Damn. Uh, to, at the time of this video, no one had won all five races. So, he... It has the potential for the queen sweep. That's crazy, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Well, the break up is coming to its conclusion here. We're going to have the senior TT race going in just under an hour's time at half past 12. And we will, of course, give you all the build-up and the interviews as the riders get out. Yeah. 
Hutchinson, who's proved himself to be an absolute maestro around the mountain course. And there is the number one machine of Bruce Anstey. The lap record still standing at 31.578 miles an hour. That's set by John McInnish last year. Less than 10 seconds to go. Well, I can tell the members of the Guy Martin fan club over there on the far side of Glen Cutchery Road that their man is still one of the favourites, along with the big local home number 10, Connor Cummings. The last few seconds tick away, we watch the flag which drops, and we are now racing Bruce Asti, Mountain Maestro, John McGuinness, now number three, Ian Rock, and that's Hutchie on the number four, GT Morgan, and Cameron Donald, so Michael is away on the Honda, this is Guy Martin on the Wilson Craig Honda, Guy's off the racing. Jesus. To say that Guy Martin number eight leads, but only by 0.45 of a second from number 10, Connor Cummins. There's only 0.06 of a second then between him and number four, Ian Hutchinson, with John McGuinness just 0.74 of a second down on him. So one and a half seconds cover the top four here. And a tight line in for number eight, Guy Martin. 131 mile an hour lap for Guy, 131.108. That's Guy Martin's fastest lap ever around the mountain course, and he's absolutely on song today. It's all about those guys on the 8 and 10 plates, Guy Martin and Connor Cummins, but it's so close right behind them, Hutchie and John McGuinness are right Crazy. there in the mix. And Connor has gone into the lead. Connor has snatched the lead from Guy Martin, but there's 0.58 seconds in it. Mm. Oh my god. God, it's so fast, dude. Yeah. It's so fast, it's almost like fatiguing. Yeah, it's like shit, dude. It's like a trance. Yeah. It's like you're high. Yeah. to fractions of seconds because of the bungalow guy martin has narrowed the gap on connor cummins to just one tenth of a second that's all there is it's still desperately desperately tight that's crazy this guy right in front of me here now red torpedo on the back of his leathers and uh, yeah, just watch that Levin. speed go on and guy martin let me just give you his details 130.642 and he was the race leader at Brockton motor but still waiting for connor connor's here now 130.278 a brand new tire in for guys he fires up and he is away Right now, so great pit stop by the Wilson Craig team, and it's the McAdoo boys who run it now. Time to up, Mark and Mark just says, Go, 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 go. She fires, and the big man is away now. Man. and Michael Dunlop and Keith Moore appearing here and the road goes quiet here for a moment or two but uh, we're still waiting uh, machine number eight uh oh it's a little too long of a pause there or is it and uh, here's Connor oh. at number 10 so we don't appear to have a Guy Martin here Guy Martin is missing no. Well, back here in the grandstand, we're not sure if we've got a red flag situation. The race has been stopped. Because a fire engine has to go onto the track. It's clearly something very serious at Balagheri. It's only the second senior race in 100 years to be red flagged. Oh, my it's God. Uh, Balagheri. Uh, Martin has reached Oh, my God. Red flag, boys. Red flag. We believe it's Guy Martin, he's, he's crashed and the bike's set fire to a field and uh, that's one of the only times they'll put red flags out. It's got wrenching for everyone, the team are pacing up and down, you can see the team boss's head down, not knowing what's going on, I mean no, nobody knows any better than anybody. 
first one knew about it was when Guy didn't arrive at Glen Helen. You like to think that it's a mechanical failure rather than a crash. So. But then we heard the hedge was on fire at um, Glen Vine. Only riders and officials are allowed in the park moving area. Everybody else out, please. Thank you. You could see the fire in the distance about a mile away. There was smoke and one of the hay bales was on fire and it slowed us way down. And then I thought, okay, well, there's the, there's a hay bale on fire. Oh, then, shit. Well, there's the bike in somebody's yard. And I'm like, okay, we're past the incident. A quarter mile later, there was Guy, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh my god! Oh my god. Guy was missing, so it had to be him. Uh, he crashed at something like 170 miles an hour, so he was off at that speed. And uh, of course you worry, you know, you don't jump a bike at 170 miles an hour and get up again. So, mm -hmm. yes, we were worried. Paul Dobbs crashed there. Uh, last night and uh, you know he, he didn't make it so uh, mm. fingers crossed for guy it's hit and miss there you know there's no one out as they're in anywhere on the circuit here and guy seems to have made a little bit of a, a rider error sort of thing and he's gone into the wall it's uh, it's not looking good i came up on the circuit oh and it just looks like bombs exploded when out goes on here the, the wall and all the bales were on fire you know guys laid there in the track his bikes but split in pieces like it's you know it's horrendous yeah we Everyone's fingers crossed at the minute. Let's see how guy is. Oh my god. It's just how it is, sort of thing. We all enter it, there's no gun to our heads to enter. We all love it and at the end of the day, if it goes wrong and the worst does happen, they've died an happy man like. You know, the show's going on, we've got four laps uh, coming here, we're at three o'clock start. No, it'll be no slower. Now let's give you the track conditions, road, lack of addition at Balagheri, dry around the rest of the course, visibility good for that race, Charlie Lambert. Got me fingers crossed for Connor today, he'll be out there giving it the berries as usual. I'm right behind you Connor if you're listening. Four laps, 150.92 miles. John McGinnis, the race. That's, that's another thing that's defining about this. You know, one of your fellow racers, the dude we've been following this whole time, like, closely, and we're most familiar with. You don't know if this dude is, what his situation is. No. And yet, you strap on, and we're going to do it all over again. Yep. yep, same speed, faster speed, same, like, nothing happened. It can't be like anything happened. you got to give it 100%, and that's tough, man. Not a lot of people yeah. can do that. Not a lot of people can, man... After something like that, especially if he was the man of the race, if he was like the every man, everyone's rooting for him. He's like the underdog. Everyone's rooting for it. It's like the wind gets taken out. Yeah. You know, and it's just, oh. Leader in the race before it was a bad one. There's a way on number two. This is Ian Hutchinson. Show number 10, Connor Cummins looking so good for the first couple of laps. He's got to keep it together for the full race today. First of those machines, it is McGuinness. Here's Hutchie now, 0.61. That's all there is between the two of them. And sad to report, Michael is a retirement of Joey's. And Cameron is off the bike. Here's Connor now, head down. So the big news here at Glen Helen, lap two. McGuinness appears to be out. And it's 3.24 seconds that Ian Hutchinson leads number 10, Connor Cummins. Man. Oh! Oh my god, no! Dude! Back here at the grandstand, we have got the situation at the bungalow where he Jesus. retains the lead of the race. We're waiting for Connor to appear at the bungalow before we can update that. News of Connor Cummins, he came off at the veranda and he's receiving attention. So Connor off at the veranda. Ian Hutchinson crosses the line and rides into the history books. Forget the famous five. This is the fabulous, fantastic five by the Bingley Bullet. Wow. Ian Hutchinson, 30 oh my years God. Old, he has rewritten the history books of one of the greatest motorsport events in the world. Man. That's bittersweet because, you know, Ian rewrote the history books. He's the first dude to win all five at 
you know, but at the same time, both Connor, the local guy, and Guy Martin, uh, they ain't doing too good. And the other guy passed. Like, it's just like, it, it, I, I appreciate this, this race, this, no, it's not even a race. It's a culture. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's bigger. Like we have to attack this as not just a, a race. It's a, it's yeah. a religion. Way of life. Culture. Way of life. Yeah. And in yeah. no other place can you find such jubilation and sorrow at the same mm-hmm. time. Because yeah. you're, you're, you're asked to, not only is history being made, in front of you at 107 miles an hour, you know, like it, it just tears you apart. I don't know. Man, yeah. It's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. Like, God, dude. Yeah. It, it yeah. all comes, it all comes down to like, you know, these guys knew what they're getting into before the tires hit the road. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. It's, if it's your time, you've, you've already signed that waiver. Yeah. Yeah. They have a blank check made out like, for that. Again, it was the sound and uh, the blur, but the blur stopped. He's coming around the corner, good race lane, really good race lane, in all fairness to him. Uh, and he was flying around. But he comes down, and he kicks the bike away, and the bike literally t- turns into a fireball on impact. Oh my God. It's like the start of a TV programme, like an all-action TV programme, where the screen is filled with flames, and this silhouette comes towards us out of a waist tight, and it's guy. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go, I've got a job. Yeah, the first thing that springs to my mind, like. So um, I reach around, grab my orange box, the, the med box, I turn around there, and guy's flying past me, followed by a, a bike which is on fire, and it just screams past me, and then the bike goes over to one side, and it's still in flames, I mean, it's black smoke everywhere, it's flames, a heck of a mess on there, and guy's in the middle. Oh, my God. I told him, I'm not going to cut your leathers, you're here, because you know, I need to check you over the first of all. And he said, you know, oh, don't cut my leathers, don't cut my leathers. Now, I understand that, because I'm a bike guy, like, and that's the last thing I'd want is somebody to cut my leathers. But he was good. He was good. Wow. Definitely somebody was out there watching him. No doubt about it. Oh, my God. Lucky guy. I thought, right, job was looking good. Job was looking good, 131 and a half from a standing start. Um. Slow him to come into the pits, I think 130.6. Battling for the lead. Went out from the pits, got about five mile out Glenvine. Took the front. Thought I got it, thought I got it, got it, got it, got it. So you've had a few moments like this. You just ride into the grip that you've got. And I was riding up to that point of, I know whether there was decent grip. You couldn't really push past that point. Because I just left the pits with another full tank of petrol. And I had this idea in my head, the grip that I could, I'd ride up to. And um, um, obviously not. I think the full tank of fire probably made a bit of difference. Um, lost the front. Fat front of, you know, one of the faster corners of the track. Probably 160, 70 mile an hour. That's right. I took the front and I thought, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. No, no, I haven't got it. But it's a jump ship. And, um, I think I ended up with a few, I've got a few bits of singed eyebrows and eyelashes and singed my fringe and what have you. But it's, uh, I ended up in the wall, I think, but I can't remember much, I was knocked out. Oh. But I'm still here. And I'm not bad, really. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, couldn't it? It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, and I think there's nothing, it's only, you know, a bit of back off my knees and what have you. You know, sliding, when you're sliding at 160, 70 miles an hour, that's a lot of heat, isn't it? You know, I've got a bit, a lot of friction burns from sliding. There's a few broken ribs, punctured lung. Um, for Chip vertebrae and two crap vertebrae. Apart from that, I like a new one. <laughs> yeah. Just sat here and... And, um... Yeah, I think... I think, I think here, I, I think... I am sat here, I'm moving my legs about, oh, I'm invincible. But then I try and get off and I think, oh, fucking hell. I'm not, I'm not as good as I think. So, like, out with the spine, you can't rush it, can you? You know, it's a stable fracture as it is at the moment, but you push any harder. You know, you can... Like, Connor is just up the corridor there. Not looking clever. You know, he's packed a bit worse than mine, and I'm just sending him away to get his his shoulder and his elbow screwed together. But part of the game, boy. We all know the risk. No one's making us doing out. All part of the game. Mm-hmm. Put me in that position again, I'll do exactly the same again, boy. Exactly the same again. That's crazy, dude. 
Oh my god. That like <sighs> yeah, he, he took a beating and so did Connor, but my god, he's still guy Martin and he's just like, "Yeah, I'll do it again." They pretty much just had <laughs> everything in my body. I'm I hurt to do anything, <laughs> but hell, let's do it again next year. Other other than that, I'm great. Like yeah. holy shit, dude. Holy shit. You know, um I never thought it, it just like dawned on me like how dangerous a a a pit stop is to refuel because it adds weight to the bike. It does. It does. It, and, and and believe it or not, like because they've been how many laps can you do on a full tank? Did they ever mention that? It's a. It, it can't be just you, one. Uh, I I know that the tires only last two laps, uh, but I'm not sure about the fuel. I mean, it's because, a long course, so I think yeah. they need to, you know, fuel up, you know, get that tank full, uh, to complete the course. Because that's a huge difference from the first lap and the second lap. The second lap, you're much lighter, and I bet that thing flies. So yeah, yeah. you have to, that's another of the million of things you have to think about is the weight distribution. Right, right. And it's not the same. Up, man. Yeah, and just keep up with it throughout the the God, race. It's exhausting, yeah. bro. It's just a lot to think about. about. It's just so exhausting. It's God, a lot to man. think about and doing multiple things at once. It's jeez. Oh, man. That's amazing it's, this man survived. Yeah. Freaking amazing! I, I don't, I don't care how great this vi video does, like, or if he even sees the light of day on YouTube. This is one of the highlights of the year. When we do the year end 2023 yeah. compilation, this is going on. That. My God. My yeah. God. I'll be back. He's just making me work for it, isn't he? So. Hard. I think I've had a podium every year since 1997, so yeah, it seems weird, you know, coming up the access road and, you know, not getting a cheer and a clap and getting waved past the rostrum and I was leading the first race and it all went wrong and then the senior, the Blue Ribbon race, I got up to sort of 11 second lead and the guy had the crash and, you know, red flags come out and you've got to come back and tune yourself back in and get dialed in ready for the restart and the restart looking like it was going good and then we had a, a kill switch failure. Two fence wire snaps off the solder brakes and, and just puts you out of oh. contention completely. And, oh uh, no! You know, that's a TT for you, I suppose. I mean, I've had a lot of luck in the past. I've won a lot of races around here, and when luck's not on your side, it's not happening for you. You know, for sure, Guy Martin's had a worse day than I had, and uh, for sure, Connor Cummins has had a lot worse day than I have. I'm still one piece, and you know, I'm gonna head for the ferry and get home and get my thoughts together and see what's gonna be available for next year. Or, you know, if nothing floats me boat, I might hang my leathers up. You never know. Man. Me and the kids together have had our down times and I haven't tried to hide anything from them. You know, we've, we've done our crying together. And then, okay, what are we going to do now? Get over it, move on. Yep. I think the point of life is to enjoy it, have as good a time as we can while we're here and what we've got given. You can't change what you get given, but you can decide whether or not to enjoy it. I've been to look at where the crash was. There's still bits of like green paint from either on the bike or my leathers. Still on the cat's eye on the side of the road. I can actually see, you know, where it's all gone wrong. I've disappeared over the side, and the way I look at it, that's where, you know, the injury started to happen. And it's sort of, it does get to you a little bit. The main one was my back. I mean, I broke that in five places and Damn. got a big scar on my back. And then, as a result, of getting tumbled down the hill and hitting a few things. I mean, I've, I've broke my arm in four places. Some slight nerve damage to it, but that's coming back nicely. My knee was dislocated, a few scrapes. We had a Whoa. broken, uh, sorry, a fractured pelvis and fractured shoulder blade and a bruised lung as well. So um, it, was a, it was a bit to take in really, you know, to get my head around it was, uh, that was a big challenge, you know, mentally. There's no chance I'm giving up. I'm 24 year old and I perfectly accept I've been really, really lucky, but uh, my love for the bike racing is still there, and uh, I've got goals I want to achieve. So the first opportunity I ever get, I'll be straight on it.
that's my plan, you know. Come up to the veranda next to TT or whenever I get back and uh, just attack yeah. it like normal. It was a big one, but we'll just get on with life. <laughs> the world ain't gonna stop for me. Tremendous start throughout the outside. We think Ian Hutchinson, the five times in a week winner at the TT, uh, may be the lad who's down there. Unfortunately, the uh, gone to a second to last race of the year on a um, short circuit, not a road race, and ended up with this injury. So. Oh my God. I mean, it's a shame how it happened, you know, to be ridden over by somebody else. Ugh. Oh. You know, when it happened and they were talking about amputating my leg, then uh, there was only one reason I didn't want it amputating, and that's so I can race a motorbike, you know. <laughs> Apart from that, nothing else really matters, so... You know, my argument was to get my foot back on, and uh, not only get it on, I said, you know, I don't want a foot just on the end of my leg, I want a foot that's 100% working, so I can get on with my job. Something happened. Couldn't have been a better time for it to happen, obviously, several oh. months until the start of the season. Oh my God. So, I just got to get on with it and, uh, you know, get back to fitness for, for the start of next year. Heck yeah. Heck that was yeah. Um, good God, man. What a, what a, what a, what was that? A documentary? What a film? Is it, like, what, what is a movie? All like, of what, the above. All of it. That was awesome. There's, deserves more than two thumbs yeah, up automatic. Thanks. That was great. That was great. Holy crap. That was, um, I dug that. I dug that a lot. I just <sighs> summarize it up and, but there's not really a way you can summarize it up. But if I was given an elevator pitch of what the Alabama man TT is, it's like the most dangerous race in the world for only the most balls to the wall people. They know the risks. Yep. They know that they may not come out of this thing alive, but yep. they still do it and yep. come back every yeah. single yeah. year every single year man and that's yeah. that's crazy man that's and it's, it's, fuck. it's, it's just, more than just a race it's a way of life yeah it's a religion it's yeah. all of the above yeah so. yeah this is something that's um man so it's so intense it's so like it this is a sport that this is a moment because it's not just a, like not a sport it's not like they do this all the time it's a moment that deserves all the fanfare around yeah. it, you know, yes, like one hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's not even comparable to anything else. You can't compare it. In fact, comparing it would do it a disservice to yeah. anything. So yeah, it, is it would. A, it is. It is. It is its own thing in it every yeah. right, and it should never be infringed upon. Like that is that is the TT. Don't talk right. about anything else. Just that. Yeah. So there. Look, there's only been two events that have canceled the Isle of Man TT. That was World War II and the COVID pandemic. That was the only thing that canceled it. Yeah. Nothing else is going to cancel this race. No. Mark our words. Yep. Mark all the community of Isle of Man TT that has flocked to this channel because yeah. of our what is has been sitting as our second most viewed video yes. on the channel. Yes, man. This is this is great, man. Oh my god, what a good what a good movie. Oh, what a good yeah. piece of footage. <laughs> like, documentary. Documentary. I, the way it was filmed, amazing. The way, like it was just the time and care and the respect that this film, this thing showed to the race, did it justice. Did, yeah, did its job. It did very well. Second to that. none. Second yep, to none. I like, I like this. I like this a lot. There's someone around us to subscribe and watch another video. Yep. Wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, and brace the suck. Unplug and do something legendary, guys. Like this. See y'all in the next one. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.